Hey, good afternoon from a sunny afternoon in December in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, this is a video I'm inserting into the Inkscape series uh, because uh, I was doing these in my current course that I'm working on and I thought it'd be nice for you guys all to see this. Um, contributions, I got to give credit to Jayette2001 who uh, I think posted a video originally showing how to draw rectangular T boxes and DPR is really good at just improving everything, uh, added some contribution as well. So I got to give them credit for what I'm about to show you. Um, so rectangular tee boxes. So this is Kapalua. Kapalua's tee boxes are all rectangular. I got a ton of them. Um, so not only I'm going to show you how to do them and make them look good, but I'm going to show you how to do it efficiently as well. So first of all, let's start by showing you how to draw a rectangular tee box. And there's really two ways, and I do have a preference, and I'll show you my preference. But when you draw a spline like you normally do, you click your spline tool over here, um, your Bezier curves uh, tool over here. And at the top, you've got two options. You've got to create a sequence of straight line segments, and you've got this thing called create a sequence of periaxial line segments. So let's start with this one first, this create segments of straight line segments. What you're going to be able to do with this, this is the most easily the lo most logical one, but I don't, this is not my preferred way to do it because the squares normally don't come out perfect unless you really work at them. So let me just show you quick. So I got this T box here that's square. I'm going to start in a corner and as you expect, I just click all the corners here and then I go back, I click and I'm done. Of course, I want to set my T box material, which I already have set by because uh, it's the last thing I did. Unfortunately, this square isn't perfect. So I could come up here to my node tool and now I could drag these around, right? And I could kind of work this and get it square. Um, fine. That's great. It's logically that's how you think it would work, but let me show you. Uh, and you can do it that way, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it. So let me come back here. Let me select. And let me delete that square that I created. So now I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to my B spline tool again. I'm going to come up here to this pair of axle line segments. And this is slick. You just have to remember how it works, though. Okay. Which is, I like to start uh, on like the back. So the my green is over here. Okay. Let me zoom out just a tad for you and move this in. So here's my green. This is a par three hole. I like to have that my target in mind because what I'm going to do is my first segment, I'm going to start on one of the back corners of the T and then I'm going to go toward target. Okay, so you can see that line is now facing, you know, kind of parallel and also is parallel to the, the my satellite overlay. I'm going to click there now. And now what I'm going to do, I can't, it's going to automatically create a 90 degree turn for me. It's, so it's going to be a perfect square. So now I'm going to come over to this other corner click and I'm going to go back to my starting point. You don't want to go back to this corner here. You want to go back to your starting point, click, and now you have a perfect square. Okay. Now maybe you don't want a perfect square, but in this case I do. And now that's not actually lined up perfectly for me. So I'm just going to come back here and I'm just going to drag it into place. Okay. Now let me just show you one more so you can see this again. I go to my B spline tool. Uh, do this one here. I'm going to click the back corner on target to the front corner, other front corner, and now back again. And I have a perfect square. Now let's zoom in on these. And you'll see that these are definitely squares, really sharp corners, which is a little unnatural looking. Okay. We really don't want that. So how we get rid of that is over here, we've got all our, so here's our hierarchy, right? Here is our, um, this is our imaging. Then we have our fill and stroke. Well, there's another thing over here called path effects. Okay. Let me just move my image. You guys might not be able to see that, but I'm moving this. Um, I'm going to come down here, hit the plus. And in this pop-up window that comes, you're going to select corners, fillet, chamfer. And then over here, you're going to do a couple things. Now, this is save my default. So you might have different things here, but I'm going to show you what I selected, which is your units. You want to make sure you have pixels. Okay. Method should be auto. And radius, this is going to be the radius of your corner. So it's going to be quite how rounded these are. 
Um, I did find that a meter is pretty good. And if you think in real life, a meter corner, that's pretty big. So it doesn't look big when you draw them here, but in real, in, on your course, when you actually have this in GS Pro, it's gonna be a meter radius. So you can kind of imagine what that's gonna be like. It's pretty big. So I'm gonna leave that at a meter. And now what you're gonna do also is this down at the bottom, you're gonna expand this part and you're gonna update, click update for unit, method, mode, and radius. Okay, or I'm sorry, you might have to, yours might just say set. So if it says set or update, one or the others. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna set these as your defaults. And why is that gonna be important? Well, I'm gonna show you in a second, okay? So unit method mode radius, hit set. Uh, mine say update, cause I already had mine set. So you're gonna set all those, okay? Now I'm gonna come back up here and I'm going to do, where did I do that? Um, so yes, it applied that. So let me click away here. And now you can see if we zoom in here, let me get in my select tool, that these corners are rounded and this one is not. Okay, so you can see the difference there. Now, why did I have you save those? Because now I can go to this one, I can go to path effect, hit plus that, and now it automatically saved my previous and it applies it. If I didn't save and set those defaults, I'd have to go back and redo all this stuff here. So now it does it quickly. So now the workflow is, I go to my Bezier tool, I go to my paraxial line segment. You can zoom out a little bit. I kind of know where my target is, but I'm gonna click front, back, corner, original point, path effect, corner fillet chamfer, and it's all good. Looks good now, right? Escape, get out of there. And that's how you do perfect rectangular T-boxes. Enjoy.